Hello everybody. Happy Friday. It's that time of the week where we get to discover another artist in focus, explore another exciting medium and look at their artworks. I'm going to ask you a question, a bit of a brain teaser. What do licorice all sorts, shiny marbles, plastic toys and chubba chub lollies all have in common? Well, they are all the beloved subject matter of UK artist Sarah Graham, who is our artist in focus this week. Born in a town in Hertfordshire called Hitchin in 1973, Sarah's favourite type of art to make is still life. And she specifically chooses subjects, that's things or persons to draw that are full of colour and a joy to look at, that make her feel good and also that remind her of her childhood. Let's take a look at some of her paintings and find out what her influences are, what her inspirations are, a little bit about her technique and then I'd like you to have a go at making some of your own still lives perhaps drawing, perhaps painting, um, maybe influenced by her subject matter, toys, your favourite sweets, donuts, whatever, be inspired. It has been Shrill Tuesday, Pancake Tuesday this week, so you might want to be inspired by some of the little sweet treats you've had this week. Up to you. Let's go and have a look at Sarah's work. When thinking about ideas of things to paint, Sarah takes inspiration from her childhood. She paints objects like toys and sweets in a very realistic style, using her trusty oil paints. She says, I'm not too concerned with deep meaning, but many pieces are very meaningful to me and every painting marks and reflects my own personal journey. What really matters to her is the feelings these subjects can evoke of joy and of a sense of wonderment. She explains that when she was younger, she used to think how wonderful it would be to hand paint the characters in Disney films. I think I found a way to satisfy that dream in my own unique way today in the art I create, she tells. Naming painting as her very first love, Sarah remembers nursery school and being told she was good at art even then, like lots and lots of you. And all the way through school, art was my thing, she explains. Sarah began to develop her skills using oil paints just at the age of eight, thanks to a gift from her dad. And from an early age too, she was really interested in an art movement known as realism, which is all about showing everyday scenes and people as subject matter. Sarah's works of art are painted so realistically, so much like close-up photographs. And some people refer to this style as hyper-realism. When asked about her influences, Sarah points to a painting of a girl called Betty. It's by a German artist, Gerhard Richter. And she says, I was looking in an art book whilst at uni and I saw it and I did a double take, thinking it couldn't be a painting. It really inspired me to combine photography and oil painting, both of which I loved. It was how I could put the two together. So, determined to paint in a hyper-realist, super-realist style, Sarah also borrowed Richter's blurring effect can you see how in this artwork of Subodo football, how some of the subject matter is in focus, a little footballers here, very highly detailed, and some is not in the background. So how does she create this blur? It's all about brushwork and the sizes of the brushes is so important. I lay the oils on fairly loose and fairly thick and then as dry brushwork, I sweep the paint and Sarah does this sweeping when the oil paints are drying. It's a really skillful technique and one that's hard to achieve without oil paints. 
However, you don't need to use oil paints to make art like Sarah. Acrylic paints and ordinary poster paints allow you to achieve the same vibrant colour mixes. And as long as you work with the correct size of paintbrush, so a very small fine brush for finer details, you can achieve a lot. In this painting of a Cindy doll named Gail, you can see how much time and care Sarah spends getting every detail of the doll's hair just right. Do you have a favourite toy? A doll or action figure or teddy, which you might like to paint, or even a favourite food? Well, one of our year twos did an excellent foodie photo collage several weeks ago. I thought I would show you for some inspiration. Sarah also takes lots of photos before she starts to work and paints from these, but if you can, why not try to draw and paint your subject matter, having it right in front of you, so that you're doing really careful looking. It is, however, her paintings of Chubba Chubs that she is perhaps best known for. Perfetti van Mele, who make Chubba Chubs, have one of Sarah's paintings in their office in Spain. In fact, Sarah's painted over 50 Chubba Chub paintings and sells them all over the world and into collections, along with many other delicious mouth-watering food paintings. So what else does Sarah do, apart from painting? Well, not long ago, she was on CBBC as a judge on Britain's Best Young Artist. And you can catch that episode still on BBC iPlayer. It was on the 10th of February. In this episode, children had to create a piece of art based on three personal objects. She says it was such a fun experience. Although the young artists were so good, it made judging really, really hard. To be on an art show on the BBC was a dream of mine since I was a kid, watching the legend Tony Hart. And finally, Sarah is very open about her mental health issues on social media. She's open about the fact that she's had a difficult time over the years battling a bipolar disorder and her honesty about this is really admirable. She said, when I look at how that undid me, I'm so deeply grateful for the happy, stable person I am now. And today, Sarah is a patron for the creative mental health charity Poets In and uses her platform to speak out about mental health in schools, amongst other places. It's a subject deeply personal and important to her. What an incredible creative. I really hope you enjoyed that whirlwind tour of Sarah's world and her obsession with colour and light. I'm going to leave this week's art homework entirely up to you. You be inspired by anything you can get your hands on to sit in front of you, draw and if you can paint or colour, colouring pens, colouring pencils etc. It really is important though that you have in front of you the subject matter that you're drawing, that you're drawing from life. That's a really key skill for all artists to develop. And as you know, I always say, draw what you see when you're doing observational drawing, not what you think you see. It's all about the conversation between your brain, your eyes and your hand, right? That triangle, brain, eyes, hand, they've got to be communicating with each other. And you do that through careful looking, keep looking. Look at the shapes, look at the lines. I am so excited to see what piques your interest. And I want my email inbox to be filled with yummy, happy, colourful things. Share at londonsoutharthub.org is the email address. But I know some of you have been having a little bit of bother with that. So if that doesn't work for you, if it bounces back from that address, try contact, contact at londonsoutharthub.org. Good luck artists!